Hi there, I'm Bonnie McCaffrey and thank you so much for coming back this month. I think you're going to really love this because who would think of using metallic fabric to quilt on? Well, Lindsay Upton would do that and I have seen some of her work. It's absolutely spectacular. And here we have a, I, I call it a boat, but Lindsay, what is this actually? Well, it's a coracle, or at least that's a Welsh word for a small one-person okay. fishing boat. But in the north of Scotland, you might call it a curragh. A curragh. <laughs> that's a hard word to say. But it is a bit. Yeah. It's, it's a tiny, unstable fishing boat uh, just for paddling around in an estuary. And if you fell out, you'd probably drown. Uh, yeah, and I'm thinking the fact that it's made of fabric, you probably would drown if you tried to sail it as a boat. <laughs> well, originally, um, they've been used since Bronze Age times, and they would be covered in animal skin that might be oiled, or later on, they were made of canvas and then painted with tar. Wow, so what have you made yours out of? This is made out of bronze-coloured spandex on the outside and chamois leather sheepskin on the inside. You know, I thought it was amazing that when I looked at the underneath the boat, I thought you had hammered out copper, but it's yeah. fabric. Um, I really do like the effect of metallic fabric so that it does look like beaten metal. Um, I, last year I did a series of Viking-inspired quilts, and this is kind of where it's taken me. Yeah, yeah. So let me see one of those pillows. Okay. This is just incredible. Well, these pieces here are leftover bits from when I made the skin. I made the skin enormous because I didn't have the frame to begin with. Yeah. So a local basket weaver friend of mine um, helped me to put the frame together. So we just trimmed it to size when it was done. Wow. It's, it's really beautiful. And you're going to show us a little bit about how you do this later, I aren't you? I will do that later. All right. Well, you have two other quilts in the exhibit, so we're going to go take a look at those. Excellent. Good. All right, Lindsay, so tell me about this one. This is made by two people, right? This was pieced by a, a great friend of mine called Anne Long, and she's the very first proper quilt teacher that I ever went to see who told me how to use a rotary cutter. Ah. So we thought it would be quite cool to make a quilt together, and uh, she really pulled me in check because this is far more subtle than I would normally go for. It's very subtle. Yeah. Much more muted colours. It's beautiful. And only the tiniest bit of gold lame. Yeah. Well, at, and a touch is really good. Oh, yeah. Really good. And congratulations. It won first place, right? Yes, thank you it's very category. much. Great. All right, let's go take another okay. look at another one. Onward. All right, Lindsay, this is a very interesting piece because, first of all, it's not flat like a quilt. No. And, of course, it does use your beautiful metal work. What do you call that? Uh, that is called, uh, that's silver spandex. This piece is called Imbolc Betula, which means, um, well, it's a Celtic festival in February. And ah, yes. It's okay. based on silver birch trees, which is the native tree up where I live in Scotland. So the festival that it involves in February coincides with um, people who are Aquarius or born in February. So we've got the theme of garnet, amethyst, and fluorite. Oh, That's right. what the colours are supposed to be. Oh my gosh. So this is three, and they're, they're representative of... Well, it's three trees, and this is all to do with a spring Celtic festival. Eventually, I am hoping to make another nine, so that there are 12, because I'd like to make a standing stone tree circle type thing. Oh, I love that. Hmm. Well, let's go take a look, and you're going to show us how you do some of this free motion quilting. I certainly would enjoy that. Can't wait. All right, so I've caught up with Lindsay, and uh, she's going to show us how she does this carved metal. I really think you need a name for this carved metal. Um, and what, what's involved in doing this? So how does it start? Well, normally when I'm at home, I use this really cheap and cheerful shiny fabric. Let me um, see it. You can get this in the bridal department of mm. uh, and prom dress type stuff. Really cheap, plastic, shiny. Love it. Um, but usually I use it as the quilt's backing. Okay. Because it's very difficult to mark that stuff. So I'll have that on the underneath of my quilt sandwich. Okay. And anything that I've marked, I would put on the top. So I quilt everything back to front. Right. However, so that people can see the colour of this stuff, we've yeah. just pinned it onto okay. this piece here. So it's up top, whereas this is not how you usually work, but... Well, no, it's quite we difficult. See what's going to happen. It's, it's difficult to work with. It frays, it stretches, but it usually behaves a little bit better if I can't see it. Right. 
And I, I would think by doing it upside down, you could actually draw what you want on this if you needed to? Well, usually I just take an ink pen and I draw on the calico. And then yeah. if, the, if the marks stay there afterwards, you just get a can of spray paint out and cover it all up. She's a wild woman. Okay, so we've pinned it in place. What happens next? I am going to do my favorite free motion quilting all over it, which is just a combination of swirly stuff, circles, and then I'll get bored and go off on a meander, and then I'll come back. Okay, so it's pinned in place. What do you need to stitch around it? I just stitched quickly around the outside to hold you want it to tight. Do that? What? Stitch around the outside. Oh, okay, I'll do that if you like. I'd love that. Okay, here goes. So we just have to go around the outside edge to hold it in place, otherwise it'll all shred and come apart. Usually, you see, you have to make these pieces bigger than you want them to because inevitably you'll have to just chop a bit off, but that's okay. When I made the coracle, I had enough spare to make cushions and bags and all sorts of things. I know. So make it plenty big and then be no problem if there's a muck up in a corner. So there we are, we're nearly all the way around the outside edge and ready to come back and do some doodling. So go ahead, show me some okay, doodling. Okay, I'll carry on. I want to see you do your doodling. I'm just going to do a few spirally things and circles and uh, see what happens. So we just do what we like. And because it's nicely closely quilted, if there's any crinkling going on, it just kind of tames it all into shape. Okay. So, do you come in with a plan, or do you just say, oh, I feel like a curly cue now, I feel like a circle now? Yeah, there's no design. I might have some circles. I really love using circles. Some of them are concentric, and then that gives me space to fill things in. Right. And then I just love to go mad with the background. Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. you do. So, you have a piece over here. Oh, right yeah. Now. Well, so, this morning I was yeah. using a piece of tissue lame. Oh, my gosh, this is cool. And uh, although it's a cheap and cheerful nasty fabric, by the time it's been quilted, it's just got the most amazing texture and shine to it. Yes, it does. Absolutely um, So beautiful. we'll probably chop that bit off and turn it into a book cover or something. Yeah, beautiful. All right, Lindsay, I just heard something that you do, and it's kind of wild and crazy, and I am just not surprised at all. But um, it's something with chocolate and M&M quilting? Yes, that's right. So what are you going to do? Well, I'm slightly addicted to M&Ms, the peanut kind. And, uh, oh, yep. me too. I love those. So when I was here at the quilt show yesterday, I thought it would be quite fun to set up an M&M obstacle course. I love it. And I'll just quilt around them. And here's the thing. Once you get around it, then you get the reward. Of course, you get to eat them. <laughs> Well, show us what you are going to do here. Okay, it's quite simple, really. You just pick out a few of your favourite colours and you dot them around the quilt top, particularly like the green Sorry. ones and uh, the blue ones, because I'm quite are those sure. Your favorite? Yeah, well, I think they've got more additives in them, so uh -huh. that's why so they're <laughs> more fun. So here we go, we've just got a few. So try to make them not roll off. Love it. And, okay, uh, let's do it. And so, really, basically, it, it, it's uh, quite fun. You just turn the machine on and you swirl over to them and you go woo woo back <laughs> and uh, sometimes they don't stay in place which well, is a little bit annoying oops that oh. one pinged off oh you lost that one you can't have that I one I go around that one twice oh here's a green one oh no I've lost him I lost him in there oops. oh and I, I just chase after it I see very good practice for beginners gives them a lot of confidence here we go again you're allowed to cross the lines racing around the M&M's here and uh, oh no the blue one it's a shame it went off there oh ping around right again you're a riot well you know it's good fun it is good fun now I get to eat one so Lindsay I would love to ask you a little question that I like to ask come on over okay so my question is do you know my question my question is what is your philosophy of life do what you like do what you like and please yourself and please yourself that's a great philosophy. Mm. Thank you so much for doing with this with me. I think they're really going to love it. Thanks, Bonnie. It's been great fun. Thank you. And thank you all. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you'll come back next month to see what I have for you then. Thanks for being with me.